It is said that Groot will become the new blender of game engines. It is open source, stable and quite efficient, that's why we have that similarity. This makes it more probable that it may eventually position itself as the industry standard in the short term, something quite similar to what happened to Blender. Today we will discuss everything related to this topic, let's start. Firstly, let's discuss the ideas for this argument that it will become the blender of game engines. First, you have the fact that more and more people have started to use Godot. We see this quite reflected in, for example, the game engines that were used to create over 7,000 games for the game jam that GMTK held a couple of months ago. As you can see, it is amazing the amount of people that actually used Godot. We have over 20%, much more than, for example, Game Maker that it only has 5. And we have other, let's say, 20% of other engines that were used. Of course, the biggest section was taken by Unity. But anyway, if we have the chance to compare this to the numbers from previous game jumps or from previous events or from previous analytics about how many people actually use Godot, we would be able to see how the increase of Godot actually literally, literally skyrocketed in the last months. Secondly, we also have the fact that Godot is always getting better and better. This is quite similar to what happened actually with Blender that it started off being quite um let's say not the best uh, version that it could be but well as time went by they were basically improving the engine uh, well the, the software in the case of blender in literally all the areas and the same thing happens to grow if we take versions one or two of the engine we can see that indeed it has it had lots of errors that there weren't lots of features but for example when actually Godot 3 was released that was a time in which actually a uh, good started to to be a little bit more noticed by game developers because it actually introduced some interesting new features, some interesting bug fixes, some also interesting changes in the UI, actually making without something more similar to what we know today. And this didn't stop, of course. After the release of Godot uh, 3.0, the uh, corresponding versions continued, and then until finally releasing Godot 4.0, that of course, as you probably already know, has lots of interesting changes. That also contributes to this idea of that Godot is always getting uh, better and better. And it doesn't actually fall behind with any of this because it's always receiving constant updates every time it is receiving new things that we can try out and always the bugs are being fixed. Thirdly, we have the active and supportive community. This is of course quite related to two things, firstly to the open source nature that it has because usually in order to make uh, some piece of software that is open source actually a hit, viral, or that is actually used by developers, there must be a community that is active and supportive behind. And also uh, this is connected to a previous point of getting better and better because it is in, in, in a big part um, thanks to the community that the engine is getting better and better. So you can see clearly how everything is uh, internally connected. Firstly, I am saying active and supportive. Let's divide this into two. First of all, it is an active community because there are always people out there helping the, the good old engine with the um, updates, with the features, with everything that is going to be released in the versions. You can see that in every version there are hundreds um, or even thousands of changes in the PRs that they make. And in most cases, this is made by just the community and they aren't even paid to do it. And on the other hand, talking about payments, they are supportive. Because literally every money that uh, comes to Groot is because of the community or some brand that actually wanted to donate their freely some money. And of course, without people donating there and without people being active um, towards creating more updates to the engine, it would die, but well, that doesn't happen because the community of Godot is both active and supportive. So basically, I would say that this is these are the three main ideas why Godot may be the new Blender um, soon. Now let's actually take a look at the ideas against, and we'll start with the lack of polish. Godot only has something like two, three years in the market. I mean, after the release of Godot 3.0, that was when actually Godot started being a little bit more noticed in the community, that it started to get the most attention from the community, the more the most people actually contributing to it. 
and actually when people started using the engine because before before um th three years ago maybe not lots of people utilized um good old. so let's say that actually good old started to become popular uh, since uh, for three years okay and of course this isn't a long journey okay we have engines that usually have decades maybe two or three decades existing they even have a company behind that it means that they have much more budget much more people working behind it making it a better piece of software so for sure if we compare good old to any other engine that is owned by a company and it has a much longer journey we're going to find interesting differences in their polish this means in their ui programming language the tools that they provide such as the physics engine and in mostly in any aspect indeed good old may not have a super super long journey but that is why right now maybe it's not the best choice to actually consider it as the new blender of game engines because it still has a longer path to go through the second point is of course super important as well and i'm talking about the console support right now porting to consoles being nintendo switch ps4 xbox etc it is quite complicated uh, there are there isn't lots of information about that uh, it is a little bit expensive to do all this and of course even if growth wasn't uh, open source it would still be expensive but what happens here is that as growth is open source they actually don't have permitted to have sdks in order to port for consoles so the only thing that they can do is basically uh, to have some other corporates or companies or third parties or whatever that can actually provide you with these SDKs and basically you would publish it with other people. That is the only way that currently exists. It is a little bit more complex and advanced so I'm not going to be talking a, li a lot a lot about this. But basically what you have to know is that if you're using good old and you're dreaming of releasing your game in consoles it is going to be super complicated, more expensive. So this is also a reason why also this uh, nature of being open source is also a downside at the same time. Because the consoles market, it is of course super big. There is uh, big opportunities in order to uh, become big, to sell uh, your games quite well and to reach overall a broader audience. But this of course in Godot there are tons of barriers. Finally, basically the lack of budget. As we don't has no company behind, as we have been explaining, basically it completely relies economically on donations, sponsorships, collaborations with other brands or companies, or even the community donating directly. As a result, this quite limits the budget that is available in order to continue developing and improving the engine. Don't get me bad, actually Godot receives tons of donations and sponsorship that you can check out in its own website. But well, of course, in order to create a, a big and amazing engine, you need tons of people working, even for the longer term, so you have to pay salaries for a quite long amount of time. So indeed, of course, it is uh, quite expensive, and only directly relying on people and companies to pay you for these things, it really makes a limitation. And when on the other hand, you have companies that have had hundreds or even thousands of workers for decades again it is again a downside of uh, being open source then is without the blender of game engines i would like you to actually answer here this question in the comments down below giving your opinion out outweighing the ideas for and against I would say that currently without isn't the blender of game engines because I think that the main idea of becoming the blender of something is becoming the industry standard. Because which is the software that is the industry standard to create 3D assets? Blender, okay? And it is free and it is open source. So without indeed, it is free, it is open source, and also it has to be stable, efficient, etc. And yes, it is, but it's not the industry standard. Unity, Unreal, and other engines having been used for the last 20 years in industries and in lots of developers so it is also it is actually quite difficult to um insert let's say a new industry standard if they have been using the same engine for decades so i would say that will good old be the new blender of game engines yeah probably but i think that it still has a longer journey to go through but anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below and we can discuss a little bit further. See you in the next one and bye bye.